So it's time for the Hegel H95. Let's have a look at it. So, H95, the entry point of Hegel's integrated amplifiers. It's a bit of a different one, this one, because you have to understand this isn't an independent review of this amplifier. This is a comparative review between this amplifier and the rest of the line. If you haven't seen the rest of the series, you pretty much have to start at the top and work back because I've done this backwards in terms of numbers. So everything that I say will be in comparison to the other amplifiers in the line. Now, this amplifier is £700 less expensive than the next amplifier, the 120, which had a, a fantastic sonic characteristic different to that of the 190, but similar to that of the 390 and the 590. The 95 treads a similar line to the 190. So there's quite a difference between the 95 and the 120 in terms of its sonic signature, more similarities with the 190. So it's 1700 pound, 10.6 kilograms for what it's worth. It's quite a hefty little thing. 60 watts per channel at eight ohms, that will flitter around as your speakers demand more or less. Has two line level inputs, two analog, so RCA line level inputs. One variable output for sort of subwoofer or power amplifier if you wanted to use it as a pre. One coaxial digital input, three TOSLink inputs, one USB and a network input. The same DAC as the 120 and the 190. No MQA support, no balanced inputs or outputs. It comes with the RC10 remote rather than the RC8 that the rest of the amplifiers come with. It's a smaller plastic variant of the metal one that I've shown you before. Can't quite put my hands on it at the moment. Don't know why. I've had the amp forever. Uh, probably why actually. It's, uh, it'll be in a cupboard somewhere nice and safe. Comes in black only and it doesn't support Rune. They've left Rune support off the 95. You need to remember this is their entry amplifier. Okay, there's things that it isn't going to have. System is the Special 40s, as with all the rest of them. Dyn Audio Stand 6 and the Cord Epic speaker cables that we're running. These ones are slightly longer than all of the other tests, but we've moved things around. So we've got a system either side of the, um, the seat and position, and we've got a system on the sideboard to my left. So we can have nothing between the speakers. I've been using Tidal. Airplay 2 as my source. Airplay 2 and the Hegel Amps I'll discuss with you in a different video. And on this one I also use the Aurelic Altair G2.1 just for my own fun, but I'll comment on it anyway. I used its DAC and the Hegel DAC because a lot of people have asked me to compare the inboard DAC to outboard DACs. It's not something that I'm really going to do, but if I'm in the position and I have uh, a DAC sat with the amplifier, which I do on the rack to my right, then uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll cover it and you can take it as you like. So let's discuss how it sounds. So starting with bass. Bass is weighty, more so than the more control of the H120. All right, so we've got a little bit more, a little bit more bloom there, a slight lack of control in comparison to the 120s. Tight sort of bass. Uh, the the 120s a bit of a sharpshooter when it comes to bass. This, like I say, treads more along the path of the 190. It's a bit more fun. It's got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more bloom to it, which does represent itself as a, you know. A slight lack of control in the sort of bass depth element of things. That's an objective performance characteristic, but a subjective taste thing. You know, someone like me might like a little bit more bottom end and sacrifice a tiny bit of control. Other people um, will want for that sort of finite precision down there and will happily sacrifice a slight bit of depth over the control of bass. So 
that's just one of its characteristics. It presents its sort of bottom end as slightly larger than, say, the, the leaner and more accurate 120. I've got a good sense of air at lower, lower sort of levels, so lower frequencies, there's nice space and detail around the bass, you know, so, so when I say things like there's a, there's a slight lack of control, that's in comparison, you know, at £1,700 integrated mark, the bass is fantastic. It's still all there at low volume, so low listening levels is actually quite pleasant with the 95, it, you know, it, it doesn't sort of shy away when you get to, say, nighttime listening levels or neighbour friendly listening levels, but it, it does play loud as well, it, it, it really does, it seems to be on that, I've discussed this in previous videos, some of the Hegel amps don't get started until about 65, 70, this one gets started around 50, and uh, yeah, it, it just, it ramps up from there. Um, I've got slightly less mid-bass attack than compared to the H120. That's to be expected and probably goes along the same lines as what I've just discussed. Um, the H120 is a, like I say, is a sharpshooter when it comes to bass from top to bottom, you know. <laughs> on to mid-range I've got a slightly smaller sonic picture than the H120 but still a nice large stage it's still got a lovely width to it and a lovely depth to the sound stage from this amplifier with plenty of speed to keep details crisp there's there's lovely speed there in the the sort of dynamic swings that the amplifier has to keep the mid-range really on tap really on cue it's nice timing from this amp I've uh, the only other comment about the amp's timing and sort of dynamic swinging on uh, female vocal specifically that I was listening to is it loses out to the 390, which is completely understandable. The 390 can swing like mad, really quick, really clear and concise amplifier that. And rightfully so, it should lose out there. You know, that is uh, three times more expensive than this amplifier, maybe even more, you know. So high frequency, less clinical than the 120, slightly more recessed than all of the rest of the line. So all the sonic characteristics are still there. It's still got that Hegel signature detail. It's just slightly less of it in comparison to all of the rest of the line, which is completely as to be expected. It's never fatiguing, it's never brash or hard to listen to. And it's all there at the bottom, you know, at the bottom of the volume range, and it's all there at the top, you know? It doesn't really put a foot wrong in terms of high frequency. There's just slightly less coherence and slightly less attack and zing at the top end than there is with the rest of the line which is completely understandable. So my conclusions for the 95 Similar to the 190, it treads a more sort of fun path, a slightly more coloured path than the other three, the 120, 390 and the 590. I've also got bass characteristics are similar to that of something very expensive. So earlier on I, I, I mentioned about the air around low bass, okay? That's a, a characteristic for me that I only really get from systems that are quite expensive with effectively full range speakers and you know a slew of amplifiers and power this amplifier has that sort of that grip and resolution down at the bottom that you, you very rarely hear especially in this sort of sub 5k bracket with the special 40 the cables and the 95 you know so that that is a a, a kind of standout feature of this setup for me so, you know, overall, it's smaller sounding than the rest of the line. Understandably so. You know, it, 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 it does sit there at the entry point. They have to start them lines somewhere. And the amplifiers that follow it are consistently better. As I've brushed on throughout all of these reviews, there are things missing from each step down. And that should be the case, as in, I didn't want to go up, I didn't want to go from the 95 up because I didn't want to uh, go through the gains. I wanted to go through what was removed. It gives me a more accurate understanding of the value of each amplifier as it goes up in its price. I think that the 95 sits 
exactly right at its price point and it's probably more fair to compare it to similar spec amplifiers in the same price bracket than it is to compare it to the rest of its line you know it puts up a really good show at 1700 pound that's not a cheap integrated amplifier you know that's still nudging on the sort of middle of the road bracket of, of audio products and let's not forget 95 percent of people probably more are never going to spend that on a full system never mind a, an integrated amplifier so it's not cheap by any means but um it puts up a you know a cracking show at 1700 pounds this is the type of sound with the special 40 that i could live with day in day out you know it also its benefits are you know, airplay, th th fun functional things that I like. You know, you know, I like to get a system playing music as quickly as possible. With this unit connected to your network, you can start it from standby by using airplay. The sound quality from airplay is more than adequate for me and more than adequate for most. You know, you're, you're discerning sort of high res guy, he probably isn't going to be happy with that. But from a convenience point of view and a family point of view, a single box with a set of speakers that you can all use just by swiping down and pressing play, that is a, a massive one-up for me, for, for, for all of the Haeckel amplifiers. And, and if you choose not to use it like that, you know, I've, I've listened to it from its network streaming point of view, I've listened to it with the, with the Aralik, as I mentioned, the Altair G2.1 via the Hegel DAC, which is a, you know, a substantial step up in sound quality is a sub substantial you know it everything i've discussed just gets larger so the bass control gets better the stage gets wider deeper high frequency um accuracy is it's just more present within the system and then you know using the um Auralic dac and switching over to an analog input that same shift goes up again you know so those same things can be said for any one of these uh, the H series amplifiers from Hegel because at the end of the day we're then just using it for its amplification rather than any of its control yeah and I do believe that you know a lot of people ask whether the quality of the internal DAC is up to par with say that of an external DAC of I don't know around the thousand pound bracket I'd probably say if you if you've got a H series amplifier and you're considering upgrading the DAC we want to probably be in the fifteen hundred pound plus bracket, uh, or or do your own tests and uh, you know get a couple of cheap DACs, a couple of sort of sub two hundred pound DACs or whichever that you can return, um, and compare the two. But I think to make a logical step up from what these amplifiers can do from inside their own box, you're going to be in the sort of fifteen hundred pound plus bracket, and that will give you a substantial step up. The Altair G2.1 DAC is phenomenal. So um, it's actually, it, it, it's kind of, them two products are kind of out of each other's territory. You know, the, you wouldn't really use the Altair with the 95. You'd probably use it with, maybe even start of the 390, but probably more realistically the 590. So yeah, it, something like a 390, a set of Heritage Specials, which we still have in stock. People kind of don't believe it, but we've got two sets left. Um, we just bought a lot of them. Um, the Altair G2.1, a nice set of stands and cables, it, it's going to run you in for probably 25, 30 grand, but that is a world-class system for me. You know, that that's a, an incredible system. And similarly, something like the 95 with, say, um, the iFi Neo Stream or um, a Rose RS250, something like that, and then a set of special 40, so you're at around the sort of five to seven and a half thousand pound mark. That's a that's an incredible full system, and there are upgrades to be had from that sort of streamer DAC over, say, Hegel's internal one. But if you notice, you know that's a considerable spend on top of the H series amplifier. I am perfectly happy to stream to the Hegel with my phone, control it with my phone. I, I'm I'm completely happy with the Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect through the amplifier. You know, you don't need, unless you're a particular type of person and you do want to take it further, you don't actually need to. So you could be done with one box and one set of speakers. 
I've not had a bad time with any of them. All of them have been absolutely fantastic. And I'll probably have to do a conclusion video, which will ramble on like I am now. But yeah, they're just such a stellar series of amplifiers. We keep them all here for demonstration. The 590 is kind of in and out. It seems every time we get one in, it goes out. So we currently haven't got one here, but we can and will. Um, and then we have, you know, like the P30A, the H30A. So we've got a lot here from Hegel that you can listen to. Um, shipping from ours is usually next day if we've got it in stock. If we haven't, it's within five to seven days. So it's quite quick with Hegel. You know, it's looked after quite well and stock in the UK and stock with ours is, is good. So, yeah, um, be sure to check the description because I'll put things in there like the playlist that I've used today. Um, it's just a studio in-car playlist on Tidal. I'm pretty sure you can search it, but I'll put it down there anyway. I'll have a description of the system that I've used and I'll have a description and links to where you can buy these products if you're looking for these products and you're using our videos to help you make a decision. Um, we do sell the products that we discuss and all those links are down below. They're not affiliate links, they're our own links from our own business. So uh, yeah, check them out and have a poke around the site. Let me know. If there's anything you want me to compare that amplifier to that you can see in here, or even something that's within our lines on our site and you can't decide between two, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'm always looking for sort of new ways to create content. And I know it's been a little while since I've done a hi-fi video. And truth be told, I've been just really enjoying doing other things. Like I do uh, our hi-fi videos in my own time. It's Saturday afternoon at the moment. Yeah, I, I've just I've just been enjoying doing doing some stuff for the family and stuff. So I, you know, I, I've just been off hi-fi videos for a little while, but I'm coming back into it. So uh, this is the last in the Hegel H series integrated amplifier sort of episodes. I'll put them all together in a playlist. If you want to watch them in order, then uh, you know, please do. But I'm Carl. And this is Studio In Car, the Studio Hi-Fi video on the Hegel Integrated H-Series Amplifiers. Take it easy, guys. Bye.